Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing well. Well, I wanted to create a video for a long time, but I wasn't getting really a lot of time to create videos. Uh, there's something that I've observed which I wanted to share in form of a video, uh, which is where I'm kind of creating this video as well. Uh, I've had the opportunity of taking around 60, 70 interviews in the past three or four months. And these interviews are primarily for a generative AI based role. One thing that I've noticed in a lot of candidates is something that I want to share. And uh, there's something that I want to kind of pitch here for all of you who are watching this video. Uh, when you start off your career, right, when you have just two or three years of experience or if you're starting off uh, in a career in data science, what I would highly recommend you to do is not to follow what's happening in the current AI ML space. Like three years, four years back, I used to tell you, you should keep an eye on uh, which models are coming out, what do they solve. But I wouldn't recommend that today. Why? Because every three or four months, big tech companies like Google, Microsoft, Meta, all of them are competing to create the best model that is available. What do they have which we don't have is access to infinite amount of GPU resource. So one thing that you'll have to realize is you cannot create a new Llama 4 or a, a different model, right? What you can create is an understanding of how this architecture is different from the other architecture. One of the basic thing that I've done with a lot of candidates in order to filter them out is to just ask simple questions around transformer network. I've literally asked a GPT model or a Llama model, which category or which family of models do they belong into? And most of the candidates have not given me a single correct answer. They've not mentioned that this is a decoder only model. Now, can you imagine people have written tons and tons of things in their resume regarding generative AI, but when you ask fundamental questions, there are very few people who have managed to give like the correct answer. Strange, isn't it? Like uh, when you started off with machine learning, you were asked questions around accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score, etc. Not a lot of people even know how do you evaluate large language models. Uh, what is beam search? What is greedy search? Everyone's clueless in this field. Everyone's calling say different APIs and getting a response which is where things get very difficult, right? Now imagine, right, if as a data scientist, if I'm only calling APIs, then why do I even exist, right? If I don't bring anything to the table, if it's all about calling an API and writing some simple prompts, a software engineer can do it for me. Well, now agents are there to even automate this process. What is that unique quality that you're bringing to the table is a big question that all of you have to answer, right? Now imagine this, there's a small boy, four or five years old. If I give him quadratic equations to solve, he'll not be able to solve. He can mostly mug up things, but if his fundamentals are not clear, if he's not understanding what one plus one is or what two into two is, uh, you wouldn't kind of appreciate linear algebra when you go forward, right? So if linear algebra is given to a four year old who has very little knowledge of the basics of multiplication, division, addition, can you expect him to kind of perform really well with complex mathematical topics? Well, the answer is no, right? The same holds true for what is now called as the LLM hype that every data scientist or every machine learning engineer is kind of falling into. Everyone's in that race to understand, hey, let's use Llama 4 for this particular use case. Let's use GPT for this particular use case. Let's use Gemini for a particular use case. No one is trying to understand the fundamental problem or no one is trying to understand the fundamental building blocks of these models. Ask yourself this question. Are you in this unwanted race wherein you want to kind of beat people just by knowing some architectures? No, right? If you want your career or if you want to stand out in your career as a proper data scientist, a proper generative AI implementation engineer, then you basically have to understand which model goes in where. Now, there are a lot of posts that people mention that uh, fine tuning and embedding model does not give you really good results for rags. 
those people have never fine tuned a single model when you kind of go out there and kind of fine tune embedding models you realize the power of having custom domain specific models that can kind of uh, excel at a, a specific task as compared to being very generic in nature which is where fine tuning is here to stay which is where domain specific rags require fine tuned models when you ask such questions to the end candidates everyone's clueless i i've had a very difficult time in kind of saying a yes to a lot of candidates who appear so good on paper but when you ask fundamental questions they are not able to answer those questions like why is there so much of disparity in terms of your resume this never existed in the case of a data scientist like the proper traditional ml folks when you ask them good questions around xg boost random forest they were very proficient and they were very clear in terms of how these technologies or how these models worked this isn't the case right now with gen ai my only appeal to all of you right now is if you are in this field of data scientist if you have 3 to 4 years of experience or if you are entering this field of data science understand traditional ml i think this is also one thing that i found really fascinating when i asked questions around classification regression uh, the gen ai data scientist had no clue about all of these terms so it's a strange affair where everyone's kind of loving large language models and everyone wants to use llms for everything don't be that person understand traditional ml mathematics generative ai comes last so your fundamentals in statistics is something that you should start focusing on what is p value in regression all of these are small terms but can kind of make or break your case if a good guy kind of interviews you so focus on basics understand regression understand classification then move on to deep learning after you've kind of cleared your machine learning questions llms have their backbone based on deep learning so deep learning is what you should kind of focus on once you have deep learning concepts really well established in your mind in terms of how a residual connection works what is back propagation what are model weights etc then move on to the fancy stuff which is large language models generative ai etc this is my recommendation to all of you out there don't waste your time in just knowing the superficial concepts when you have 6 to 7 or 8 years of experience no one's going to hire you with this skill set take out some time understand how these models work and then start utilizing them in your day to day workflows i hope this video was kind of an eye opener for a lot of you who are kind of entering this field or who are midway in your career i hope this video helped thank you so much for watching this video